Joe Biden, executive order today on guns. And so everybody has been a little bit concerned about what the new administration is going to do as it relates to firearms. We're hearing all sorts of language about white supremacy and equity here and dangers to our democracy and insurrections and on and on and on. So we were all just waiting for it. Well, here it is. Joe Biden today, this update comes over from the New York Times, says that Biden announces actions on guns and promises this is just a start. So aren't you excited about that? We're just getting rolling as uh, is to be expected because we have a new administration. They've got several years to make sure that they strip you of your Second Amendment rights. President Biden on Thursday took a modest set of steps to address what he calls an epidemic of gun violence, acknowledging that much more needs to be done, pressing Congress to take more aggressive action by closing background check loopholes, banning assault weapons and stripping gun manufacturers of protection from lawsuits. So if somebody shoots somebody with a gun, you can sue the person who made the gun. Right. So sort of like if you get into a car accident, if somebody hits you, you get to sue Toyota. Right. Or not. We've got a long way to go, says Mr. Biden. Seems like we always have a long way to go. Acknowledging the limitations of the measures he can implement. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. It's an international embarrassment. So we're in a new epidemic now, according to the, the president. So that's great. Uh, not even out of the first one, but we're already in another one. Justice Department would issue a proposed rule to curb the proliferation of so-called ghost guns, kits that allow guns to be assembled with no serial numbers. And uh, the intention of the rule would be to require that the components in the kits have serial numbers. I want to see these kits treated as firearms. Ghost guns, experts said, have become particularly appealing to criminal organizations and right-wing extremists, oh no, there it is, who want untraceable firearms and do not require any background checks. They often are tied to shootings in states like California, which have instituted strict gun laws. So have any of the recent shootings been ghost guns? I don't know. I haven't. That's the first time I've even heard of that phrase. Ghost guns? All right. I, I don't know. Was the shooting that took place in Colorado, a ghost gun? Maybe it was. I don't know. Mr. Biden also said he would require that when a device marketed as a stabilizing brace transforms a pistol into a short barrel rifle, it's going to be subject to the requirements. He said that he will also publish a red flag legislation model for different states. So the federal government is going to draft some things that they want states to impose. The measure would allow police officers and family members to petition a court to temporarily remove firearms from people who may present a danger to themselves or others. Yeah, the government, police officers, and wacko family members can come strip you of your rights. So while Mr. Biden cannot pass national red flag legislation without Congress, officials said the goal of the guidance was to make it easier for states to want to adopt it and to do so now. Arizona did the exact opposite. I'm going to show you that at the end of this segment. The department also plans to release a comprehensive report. Red flag laws can stop mass shooters before they can act out their violent plans. Like, uh, you know, like there were, there were several of these cases where I think the FBI already knew about these people. <laughs> so there's already been red flags and the FBI just like, I don't, I don't know. We're, we're worried about grandma in the congressional buildings. So we can't keep tabs on all these people outside of mass shooting gun violence remains the leading cause of death for black men between ages 15 and 35, which makes sense because of all these racist right-wing extremists, apparently. Apparently, the right-wing extremists and criminal organizations are uh, causing the epidemic that's resulting in the death of black men. Mr. Biden said his remarks, noting that additional funding he proposed for community violence can save lives. They were announced on Thursday they do not match in scope his commitment to the issue over the course of his career. He passed or played a key role in passing the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act, then authorized 10-year ban on assault weapons. He acknowledged this is just the start. The House passed two gun control bills. We've talked about both of those on this show a lot, and neither one of them look like they're going to face or, or pass the 60 vote bill. He called on the Senate, though, to take action. So this is Joe Biden today. Apparently, he said AFT, AFT instead of ATF. Saw this posted over by Caleb Hull on Twitter. Here he is today talking guns. Today, I'm proud to nominate David Chipman to serve as a director of the AFT. David knows the AFT well. Today, so that's twice, not once, but twice. The AFT is not an agency that I know of. It's the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms. So there's your, there's your president. Then we have another one over here. It says, I want, well, what's this one? Oh, here's another clip. Proud, excuse the point of personal privilege we used to say in the Senate, 
I'm proud that the red flag law in my home state of Delaware was named after my son, Attorney General Bo Biden, our son, excuse me, Joe, who proposed that legislation back in 2013. I want to see a national red flag law and legislation to incentivize states to enact their own red flag laws. Today, I asked the Justice Department to publish a model red flag legislation so states can start crafting their own laws right now. Just like with background checks, the vast majority of the Americans support these ex extreme risk protection order laws. And it's time to put these laws on the books and proud. All right, so I didn't actually, that's that the Daily Caller said, he said, I see a national red flaw law. No, I didn't hear him say that, but uh, the point is red flag laws, that's great. So uh, we'll see if any of the states adopt his proposal. I think that some will, and most will not. Any state that is even moder moderately in favor of gun rights are just going to scoff at this, as we're going to see has already happened here in this great state. So next up, we got the Biden administration announcing, you heard from Joe, that said that David Chipman, who is uh, a retired special agent from the ATF, is now going to be the leader of the AFT or the ATF, whatever agency Joe Biden wants him to be a part of. And we're noticing now that this guy, David Chipman on Twitter, has his tweets protected. So as soon as he gets the nomination, he locks down ATF special agent gun violence prevention advocate. So that's good. So we have a prevention advocate who is a part of Gifford's courage. Who's a Michigander who's going to be <laughs> dealing with guns in this country. And of course you remember Gabby Giffords was the woman who was shot. She was a congressperson shot down in Tucson here in Arizona. And so obviously, you know, we don't want people to get shot here, but having a gun violence prevention advocate and somebody who's a part of that doesn't bode well for gun rights if you are dealing with the ATF. So that's going to be great. Finally, they announced in the Biden administration that they're going to be nominating David Chipman to serve as the director of ATF. He worked at Giffords, which advocates for gun bans. So we have a gun banner now in charge of the ATF. He's a fierce gun control advocate, according to CNN. Chipman locked his Twitter account so people cannot see what he has stated publicly. However, a comparison of online archives to current account appears to show that he has deleted well over a thousand tweets. Isn't that nice? Now, Donald Trump got skewered for uh, blocking some people. Is this the same thing? Can he get skewered for that? Here is Robbie Starbuck posting on Twitter as well, saying, why did Biden's second new amendment hating ATF nominee or second amendment hating ATF nominee David Chipman delete all his tweets and go private? So this one was deleted. This one was deleted. You are... You live a life of immense privilege and unparalleled safety if this is what you find scary. Rifles are supposed to be lethal. The reason the Second Amendment exists is to protect us from tyrannical government. Tyra tyrannical governments are typically well-armed. Your argument is invalid. Facts matter. So he's just going on a deletion spree. Let's see if we can learn a little bit about him, though. Joe Biden plans to nominate ATF Director David Chipman. He's a Gabby Giffords Courage lobbyist. If nominating gun lobbyists isn't corrupt, required expert and required expertise is so-called ghost weapons and assault weapons, I volunteer next time. That's according to Aiden Johnson. So this is his profile over on Giffords, Courage to Fight Gun Violence. Senior policy advisor at Giffords, served 25 years as a special agent for ATF. So he's been there for a long time. He disrupted firearms trafficking operations in Virginia that were supplying illegal guns, member of ATF's version of SWAT, named special agent in charge, community partnership, two terms on the Firearms Committee on International Chiefs of Police, often sought by the media, originally from Detroit, undergraduate degree from American University, master's degree from Johns Hopkins University. All right, so that's who that is. Here's a little bit of his background. So from 2016, to present Washington, D.C. Senior Policy Advisor, Courage to Fight Gun Violence. So what did he do? He was a senior advisor to Gabby Giffords and our new senator, Mark Kelly, who is her wife. The advocacy group is committed to urging leaders to enact common sense policies that keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people and reduce gun violence. The Giffords Law Enforcement Coalition is a group of the nation's leading law enforcement professionals dedicated to gun violence profession charged with providing firearms policy training to members of Congress, member of the Firearms Committee. So he's been doing that for quite some time. So he's a gun banner, which is great. Then we have from 2013 to 2017, Senior Vice President for Public Safety Solutions, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, going back to 2012. You can see this here, down here, 2012. Moving forward, Fire Bureau of ATF, 1988 to 2012, Government Affairs, 
So very long time prevention and violence against police, emerging use of force issues, reducing gun violence in our communities as back as, as far back as 2011. Let's go all the way back and let's see. 1987, Office of Insp Inspector Jet Misconduct Crime. So this is early stuff. Trafficking, hundreds of firearms. So he, this guy's been doing this his whole life, right? Very, very, very strong anti-gun fella. And uh, now he's going to be running ATF. So perfect, perfect role for him. Let's take a look at this article over from Town Hall. Biden's nominee for ATF director is a major gun control activist who was involved in Waco. It's not pronounced wacko, okay? For years, Chipman served as senior policy advisor for the Giffords Center. Both aggressively advocate for federal government to ban most commonly owned firearms. Also part of Bloomberg's anti-Second Amendment apparatus. And during his time as an ATF special agent, he worked at the Branch Davidian trial. After the government, ATF and FBI botched a raid in Waco, Texas. Bad decisions made by federal agents resulted in the death of 76 people, including pregnant women and dozens of children. I was just a kid when that happened, and I remember that vividly. Very fascinating story in this country. One that is reprehensible on behalf of our government. We're going in there and just eliminating a bunch of people in there, regardless of what you think what's going on there. 76 people dead at the hands of our government repulsive behavior but this guy worked on that so that's good so that's good yeah, good 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 here is david hookstead david chipman who will soon run atf falsely claimed on reddit that the branch davidians from waco shot down multiple helicopters during the siege that's a complete lie here's what he posted at waco cult members used 250 caliber berettas uh, barrets to shoot down two texas air national guard helicopters which which never happened point is it is true we are fortunate they are not used in crime more often the victims of drug lords in mexico are not so lucky america plays a role in fueling the violent the violence south of the border okay so basically the government has total power to do whatever they want and he just makes up facts that justify the government intruding into places like waco and killing 76 people so that's great looking forward to this fella all right and this is what arizona is doing as a response so maybe you'll see more of this from your local officials maybe they want to emulate this let's take a look and see what's going on here this is posted by the arizona republican party our arizona republican legislatures are leading not just talking and this is from rep leo biasucci it says proud to announce that arizona citizens now have an extra layer of protection regarding the second amendment my bill hb 2111 was signed by doug ducey yesterday which is two days ago. Second Amendment Unenforceable Federal Laws Sponsor. The overview. This prohibits the state of Arizona from using personnel or financial resources to enforce any U.S. government law that is inconsistent with any laws of this state regarding the regulation of the firearms. Second Amendment of the Constitution states, a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed under the Second Amendment. The Arizona Constitution stipulates that the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land and the state is subject to it. Additionally, the Arizona Constitution authorizes this state to exercise its sovereign authority to restrict the actions of its personnel and use its financial resources for purposes consistent with the Constitution by passing an initiative. And here this says, this specifies that pursuant to the sovereign authority of this state, Arizona and its political subdivisions are prohibited from using any financial resources or state personnel to administer or cooperate with or enforce any law, order, rule, treaty, or regulation of the federal government that is inconsistent with any laws of this state regarding the regulation of firearms. Boom. We'll take it. Nice job there, Rep. Leo Biasucci, for sending that right back down the government's throat. And we'll see what happens here. I'm not real sure that they are going to be able to even pass any of this stuff. But it's on the radar, and we now have a new director of the ATF who is a little bit out there on certain things and is very, very aggressive with wanting to eliminate guns from you and me. So that's great. Let's take a look at some questions over from watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com is the place to be, and we hope you go over there and support us. This is from Jay Bone in the house, says the Biden speech was embarrassing. This whole thing about gun manufacturers not being able to be sued is made up nonsense. Gun manufacturers can absolutely be sued just not because some idiot uses their product to commit a crime. Yeah, right. So they're 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 liable for it. They're just not or they could be liable for it depending on how involved they were in the underlying incident. They're just not guilty suddenly because they manufactured something. Okay, what if somebody smacks somebody in the head with his water bottle and they died as a result of a concussion? It's a big water bottle. Is is Yeti responsible for this? No. 
okay, the person who did it is. So it's just it's just asinine meandering. What they're trying to do is open up the floodgates of litigation so that gun manufacturers just decide that they're going to do other things. We're just not going to sell guns anymore, or we're going to leave the country and go sell them elsewhere. So it, it we'll see where it goes. We got J-Bone86 said the Senate should play videos of Chipman and crew killing children at Waco during his confirmation hearing. Oh, yeah, they should. They should. They should. What happened that day was was ridiculous. Jeremy Matrita says the larger problem we face in the U.S. is the proliferation of racism and fear mongering by politicians. Yeah, that's a pretty good argument. Kind of work your way up the chain a little bit. Right. If the if the politicians are out there screaming racism and fear mongering, maybe that's going to incline people to go and get violent with one another, which may lead to shootings. So good questions. Once again, over from watching the watchers.locals.com.